Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're doing an Arduino-based DCC reversing loop. Welcome back everybody. First of all, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates like this video. So first of all, welcome to the new DIY and digital studio space right here. This is where I'm going to be doing my intros and outros for videos. And this is actually also where I edit all of the DIY and digital railroad episodes. So every episode that you've seen recently has come from this editing machine right here, which is a custom build. And I've got a lot of my train memorabilia displayed. Um, it's still a work in progress, but I'm very, very happy with the way that it's going so far. So let's go ahead and hop into the first Arduino tutorial of the year. And like I said before, it's a DCC reversing loop. It's a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we begin, let's explain why you would want a reversing loop and why it needs special consideration. The first reason is a similar benefit to a point-to-point -point layout, a smaller footprint for your main line. By making it to where there's just a single track that runs across your layout, you take up less space, and you are free to run your track in whatever arrangement you'd like, just as long as the ends connect to a reversing loop. The second reason is that it can give the appearance of a more prototypical operation. The most prototypical track plan is a point-to-point. But with many of us liking to rail fan our railroads, myself included, a way to continuously run our trains is desired. The reversing loop can give us the best of both worlds. The only drawback of this is if you are doing continuous running, the loop limits the size of your train. So if reversing loops are so handy, why doesn't everyone put one on their layout? The main reason is they are more complex electrically than a simple loop. A reversing loop that is not specially modified will suffer from short circuits. This is because the train is not the only thing that is getting reversed. The rails carry a positive and negative current, and when those get reversed, they short circuit when they come into contact with the mainline power. To fix this, you need to electrically isolate the reversing loop by either cutting the rails or using insulated rail joiners. You then need something that can flip the electrical polarity so that it matches the main line when it needs to. Most store-bought reversing loop controllers use short circuit detection to flip the polarity, but we will be using sensors that tell us when the train is in a position where the polarity needs to be flipped. The main benefit of using an Arduino for this is that it allows for customization down the road, but more on that later. To accomplish our goal, we need the following components. An Arduino Uno, since we are using Cotter Unitrack for this, we will need an L298P motor shield to flip the turnout. But if you're using snap switches, I will refer you to this video where I show you how to control snap switches with an Arduino. Two relays, two infrared sensors, and a breadboard. The relay is what we will be using to flip the polarity of the track. The relay has terminals for input power, the output for an open relay, and the output for a closed relay. We will hook the main bus line into the input. We then connect one set of feeders to the open relay terminal on each relay, and one set of the feeders to the closed relay terminal. These feeders will go to the opposite rails, therefore reversing the polarity when the relay switches to them. The first thing we need to do is place our sensors. We then put the motor shield on the Arduino. Now we will hook up 5 volt power and ground to the breadboard. We then connect the power to the sensors.
followed by connecting the sensors to analog pins A2 and A3. We then connect power to the relay. The relay needs power from the Arduino because it uses an electromagnet to flip the relay open and closed. The relay has two input pins for control. We're going to connect those to digital pins 5 and 6 on the Arduino. That's it for setup of the mechanism itself, so let's head over to the computer. Okay everyone, we're in our Arduino IDE and the first thing we need to do is we need to declare some integers. So we're going to start off with INT DCC white. Now the reason that we're doing white is because Kato Unitrack feeders are white and blue. So we're going to say that that is going to be hooked up to pin five. And we're gonna do int dcc blue equals six. And this declares our dcc feeder in feeders. Next thing we need to do is we're going to need to put the turnout control and everything in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go int turnout is equal to 12. And we're just going to say that that is turnout direction. And then we're going to do int brake which since we're technically controlling a motor we're going to need to release the brake which will always be released then we'll need to do the power and that's going to be equal to three Those are all of the pins that are pre-wired to be the control pins for the Arduino motor shield for motor A on it. So the next thing we need to do is we need to do INT sensor one equals A2, which is gonna be our sensor. And then INT sensor two, which is going to be A3 which is going to be our sensor input. Okay, so those are all the integers that we need to declare, so we can go ahead and step on up into our setup. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is we're going to need to set up our serial in case we need to do any diagnostics. We'll set that for a 9600 baud rate. Serial begin, that begins. Then we need to establish what our pins are gonna be for inputs and outputs. So we're gonna do pin mode, DCC white, and that's gonna be an output. And we have quite a lot of these. So we're gonna do pin mode, DCC blue, that's an output. And then we're gonna do pin mode, 
turnout. That's an output. And then pin mode break is an output. Pin mode power is an output. And now we need to set up our sensors. Those are inputs. Okay, so those are all of the pins that we need to set up. Now we need to enumerate our switch states. I'm gonna be calling them loop states, so we're gonna do enumerate loop states. And then we're gonna put our bracket. And then we're gonna do SD underscore R1. We're gonna have four in total. SD underscore R2. SD underscore L1. And ST underscore L2. And then we'll put our semicolon and then we'll do loop states, loop state equals ST underscore R1, which means that's gonna be our default. Okay, so that is it for the setup. And now we can go ahead and hop into our first loop. So we'll go ahead and delete out the text right there. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna do analog read sensor one. And what that does is it just reads the output. Or rather, reads the sensor input. Analog read sensor two, that'll do the same thing. And then we're gonna do serial.println, which is short for line, sensor one, displays, Sensor value in serial monitor, which for those of you that don't know, the serial monitor is right here. You click that and it's gonna give you a constant readout. Then we'll do serial print LN, sensor two. And we're gonna put a delay of 500 on that. So it's going to read it every half second. So now we need to set up our switch. So we're gonna go ahead and type switch and then put in parentheses loop state. Then we'll start our bracket. The first thing we're gonna do is case st underscore r1, which is gonna be our first state. Then we're gonna put a colon, and we're gonna do switch r1, and then sensor one and sensor two. We'll do that, and then we're gonna put a break. Then we're gonna do case st underscore r2. Switch R2, sensor one, sensor two, and break. Then we're gonna do L1, switch L1, sensor one, and sensor two break and gotta put my semicolon there k 
case st underscore l2 colon switch l2 sensor 1 and sensor 2. All right, and then we put our break, and that is it for the main loop. All right, now we can start into our switch state. So we're gonna do void switch R1. INT sensor one and INT sensor two, since we're basing everything off of those. All right, so now we need to write what's going to happen here. So we're start with digital write DCC white high that's going to turn on the DCC white relay digital write DCC blue high is going to turn on the DCC blue relay. Then we'll need to do digital write, turn out, high, digital write, break, low, And digital write power 255, which is the maximum power. All right, max power to the turnout. And then we're going to immediately go loop state equals st underscore r2 and that's going to switch us over to the off state And that's it for R1. So now we can do R2. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy. So rather than retyping all of that, I'm just gonna copy it and modify it. So we're gonna switch that to R2 right there. Then we're gonna keep the relays. Everything here is gonna stay the same, except for the power. We're gonna need to turn the power off because we don't wanna burn out our turnout motor. Now we need to add a few extra things for R2. The big thing is we need to add the if then statement. So we're gonna do if sensor two is less than 200, loop state equals st underscore L1. And that's the only other thing we have to add, really. Do another bracket right there. So that's the whole, that's one half of it already. So now we're gonna go ahead and copy all of this and we're just gonna do the modifications. So now we need to switch these both from R1 and R2 to L1 and L2. And then we need to switch the relays from high to low. We'll also need to switch the turnout to low because it's gonna change the turnout's direction.
but the power should stay the same. We also need to switch it to switching to state L2 and then state R1. Okay, real quick, I did forget one little thing and I wanna make sure that this is in there. So the only thing that I forgot was that I need to change sensor two to sensor one on the void switch L2. Sensor two needs to be sensor one. Okay, back to the tutorial. And then we just need to double check everything. Let's go ahead and compile it and see what happens. And there we go. Let's go ahead and upload our sketch. Okay, we've loaded the sketch and we're all ready to go. But before we hook this into the track, we're going to do a static test of the mechanism. As you can see, the relay flips open and closed, and the motor that will control the turnout briefly fires. Here is our reversing loop. Now I had to move to the floor because it is so large. I have two feeders hooked up to the loop, here and here. I also have insulated rail joiners right at the turnout and main bus power to the main line. Here is the entire setup hooked up with DCC power. Okay, here's the relay. You can see that I have both white feeders coming into the open and closed terminals of one relay and the blue feeders coming into the open and closed terminals of the second relay. I also have the main bus line split into that one wire goes into one relay and the other wire goes into the second relay. Now it's time to test it out, and as you can see, I've placed the sensors near the turnout. Here are a few close-up shots of the loop in action. So that's the Arduino DCC reversing loop. A few quick troubleshooting tips. If you get a short circuit when the train immediately enters the loop, your wire connectors on the relay are backwards. Simply reverse the wiring by flipping the wires on each of the relay. If your turnout is not aligning properly, simply flip flop which sensor is placed where. So that is how I make an Arduino-based DCC reversing loop. Now the great thing about with it being Arduino is that there's a lot of room for customization. You can add a few more relays and have sections of track where you can cut the power so the locomotives don't collide with each other if they're coming through the loop, if you have a special setup that would necessitate that kind of thing. There's a lot of different things that you can customize with an Arduino-based system like this, and we're probably gonna get into that at some point in the future. But for now, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates like this video. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Happy railroading!